Hey. Hey. How's it going, man? Good. Thanks for uh, going to do this. Oh, uh, thanks. I thanks for asking. I I I uh, I don't know. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done a lot of them in a while, so I, I don't know what I remember from a lot of the work I've done over the years. <clears throat> it all kind of blurs together after a while. Yeah. I was really surprised, though, that you hadn't done an interview about that before. Yeah, not really. I did. Um, <clears throat> the only one I did was uh, there was a, a group Zoom that was a kind of a reunion of the people, the cast of As Told by Ginger. Okay. Which yeah. was. That was the first voiceover I ever did, and I got my SAG card out of it, so that was pretty cool. But it was—I uh, didn't actually get cast in it. I did the—I did the singing. Oh, so right. it was my—I was a singing part. So I it wasn't actually—I um, wasn't really cast as a voiceover, like a speaking part. So, but it was kind of a backdoor way, I guess. But <laughs> hmm. was your was your goal to start then? Was it uh, to pursue singing or acting? Definitely both. I fell into the voiceover stuff, though. That was just kind of completely accidental. It was uh, I was a singer who acted. It was when home studios were being invented and people on, and the musicians, the band started to home record. And so all the recording studios were empty mm-hmm. and needed work and didn't have the bands because they, there was a big drop in, in uh, music recording sessions. So it's all the same equipment that's used for voiceover. So these production houses uh, started being born. They, they started farming the work from Asia and Japan and stuff and setting up to do that work instead. And so a lot of the engineers, they, so it was on them to um, translate it, cast it and record it, you know, and then give it back to them. So that was what, because everything else was finished. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So these guys were not, in the business they were learning as they were going and just had to put it all together and make it happen just because the work was there and they had tons of it because uh japan there was a, a backload of stuff that you know needed needed english subtitles on it or i overdubbed so so they started doing it and i started getting phone calls to come um audition for these things because they knew i was a singer and an actress they knew me as a singer because these guys all the engineers and and working in these um, production houses were musicians that I knew as musicians. Yeah. They kept calling me and I kept getting cast and kept, and they just kept passing my number around. Uh, so I never even made a reel. You know? <laughs> I never, I just, uh, everything is, was all just from knowing my work or knowing me or reference, you know, the reference um, that the, they did for each other. So that also was also a kind of a big reason why the reputation for this stuff was so bad at the beginning because it was so choppy and, and awful because these guys were not directors of acting. They knew nothing about story. All they knew was how to record, right. you know? And then slowly over time, and I, I've been kind of in the business the whole time to watch it grow, but the fans and became directors and stuff and then began to actively pursue it as a career. You know what I mean? Like, they were fans of the work itself and that's when you really saw uh overdub take a huge leap in quality because Mm -hmm. they cared and they knew and they knew acting they were actors themselves and and were able to um uh really reproduce the 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 content better with the storylines and and all that so that was pretty cool do you remember what your first anime role would have been then it might have been Night Rider. And then I know I did Pat Labor. That was one of the first things I did when I did a whole bunch of Pat Labor stuff. Yep. Um, that went on for like ye- years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that was definitely one of the ones, the, one of the first long term jobs where it was recurring, where they kept calling me in for the next air episodes, you know. Um, but yeah, I think it was, I think it was Night Rider. I think that was what it was called. And here's the other thing. A lot of these titles changed. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I did the title, it was a whole, it was, it was a Japanese name or it was a different name. And then I never saw them. They never gave me copies. I never okay. got copies. One, only copies I have. I was given copies of Oh My Goddess. So I have the whole series. Of them. And those are really beautiful. That was really one of my favorite, favorite things to do. That was a really fun series. Really well done. You know? 
the series itself and then the quality of the voiceover was yeah. you know that was just fantastic so yeah i was sorry to see that one end <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah she was by far my favorite character to do oh it was it was a real joy to do her she's just so delicious and fun god there i'm trying to jog my memory there there were some fun ones along the way and then there was some crazy stuff and it was it was all it was such a hodgepodge you know quality wise because nobody knew what this stuff was you know what i mean of the you know where the way the people that i came in through and then by the time he had like in my av post and uh you know that's when the real the real quality begin to shine through and see that and like that because they're they're all actors you know and um and directors and you know they care you know about the whole medium it really juiced the whole uh, the whole medium it's great what was your uh, personal experience working with uh, mike center nicholas oh mike's awesome i go way back with him he was one of my first people that i worked for let's see what was my first thing with my God, way, way back. I mean, I don't even remember, but we really, we came up together, you know, I mean, uh, he was just getting started and he was, he's just always been a dynamo, just a great yeah. guy. I, I don't know how he does it. He never, I don't think he, I don't think he sleeps actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think he time travels and then, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and that's how he gets his regenerated, you know, mm-hmm. Yes, he's a, yeah, it's hard to keep up with that guy, but he's a great, great guy. Yeah, I've, I've done a couple other, or well, a few other people like Tara, Tara Sands and Megan Hollingshead. And, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I, I know of them too. I met Tara once, but there was a, a friend of ours who had a party or something, you know, that, so it was about, like a birthday party. There was a bunch of voiceover people. Yeah, but she had another mega talent. I mean, my God. It's always interesting to see how, how it all comes together, you know, some of them, you know, and it's also a real uh, hodgepodge of like, I mean, some, not just quality, but the way you record and the materials, that, the materials that you're given, you know, yeah. like sometimes you get to see the screen and watch the lip flap and have a beep. Sometimes you got somebody just yelling, go. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> I mean, like, the end of it, and now, you know, or, uh, but you don't get the, or you don't get to watch, or they're not, sometimes they're not totally drawn in yet, you know, because now with the new animation, once they got the, the applications, the programs, you know, the technology uh, got up to speed, um, it's way easier for them to readjust and do the, uh, so that the cartoon, even if it's in another language, they can make it match the mouth, you know, the, the new language. It's wild. It's wild that they can do. So one time, one co- a cartoon I did, and that was the reason, actually, the first thing I ever did was this uh, cartoon called Pillow People. Okay. And that was done old school. It wasn't um, anime. This was a new cartoon. And it was kind of like going to be like the, like the Smurfs. It was oh. based on a, it was based on a stuffed animal. So, uh, pillow People were... Um, you know, kid pillows that have, have characters so that um, it helps kids, you know, they were created by a uh, child psychologist to help them like not be afraid of the dark or not be afraid of, you know, or, or not be angry, or, you know, hit things or not be whatever, you know, and done kind of like little Smurf town, you know, and I had two characters on that. And that one was done more like the Simpsons oh. where it's round rock where you're in the same room and you're in a circle. And you all have your own microphone, but you're all in the same room. So you're acting. It's ensemble acting. Right. And that is so fun. That's really neat. Because it's like, then you really get to interact with each other. And, I, and some of the things I've done since, we've done some uh, ensemble acting. But you rarely get to do that. It's a real treat when you do. I was going to pull up this, like some of the roles that were early on that instilled your voice in my head when like when I was growing up I don't know if you remember being in uh Yoto Den oh Yoto Den I I remember the name I would have to see a picture of the of the character to remember to remember I'd have to see a picture of the character when I see the character then that's when when the voice comes back to me okay oh right yes I remember that one it's there and yeah yeah 
Yoda Den, I can't quite remember what happened in that one, or or I can't figure out what I looked like. It was it was set in feudal Japan, and there was um demons, and you played a female ninja that got uh like sacrificed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she, she was a big a big blonde woman, right? She had brown hair. Oh, brown hair. Was it a ponytail? Yeah. Or, yeah, it was a ponytail, right? Yeah, that was fun. That was a cool one. <laughs> that was actually really cool. I remember that one. That was one of my faves too. I love fighting stuff. The fighting stuff is really fun, you know? Right. Like doing all the action stuff. It is really neat. Yeah, you're taking me back now. Wow. <laughs> oh, I could see the artwork in my head. Yeah. That was a cool one. Or with um, Magic Users Club. Yes, Magic Users Club. Yes. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, too. Oh, what was my character's name? Saki. Saki. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, Magic Users Club. That was fun, too. Yeah, that was good. Well, they got through. thanks for reminding me. Those were fun, fun shows. Yeah. <laughs> there is a really, it's from the 80s, too, uh, Golf Force. Yes, Golf Force. That was a little more serious, right? Um, that was like a, was that a cop show? It's a bunch of girls in space that have, yeah, it's like a intergalactic, um, like, co female cop team. Oh, yeah. Golf Force. Oh, man. See, that's the other thing is I never got to see all of them. Because yeah. we never gave us copies. They're expensive. Right. <laughs> it was like, I didn't was like get paid that much to buy this thing, you know? I don't know how they are. They're, I don't know what the price is nowadays, but back then they were like $40, you know? About with um, Kate playing Keiko in the Yu Yu Hakusho. Keiko. I remember that name. Some of those crazy ones. <laughs> 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 oh, the monster ones are always funny. The tentacles some ridiculous stuff they're really funny yes i seem to recall keiko <laughs> wow you are taking me back that's funny yeah i've been doing the i i don't do too much since it's gone self-record i've really kind of i rarely i rarely do stuff anymore because first off i live in a very very healthy place and i can't really build a, like a box you know but I am in New York City, so I can go into the studio and record still. So I, there are still things that I do once in a while. But yeah, these days I'm just I'm in my band, Supersonic Blonde, in you know, my rock and roll band. And yep. I was playing last night over on Bleecker Street, and um, and I've been putting putting my efforts into that lately. So you have to check it out. Check out the band. <laughs> but yeah, it's really hard to balance the two things: the uh, voiceover and uh and singing because singing rock and roll i'm always kind of roughed up and um right you know like i've got an audition i gotta do that's due at the end of the day but i had gigs all week so i've been trying to get to the point where my, my voice is in a good enough place and i can uh go get in the closet real quick and do it you know pokemon was great that was I did it over at uh, Do Art, and I loved that character. She was so fun. I was so sad to see her get killed. That was um, Hunter J. She yeah. was a badass. Yeah, she was super delicious too. She was she was like my second favorite one, maybe you know, like as far as having a recurring character. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, she was up there with Erd for me. I really enjoyed playing her. It was a real shame to see her get drowned in the ocean. <laughs> That's like the closest thing to death anyone has ever experienced on Pokemon was my character. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only one that's ever like died. Like it's gone, not coming back. But they don't show death, of course, because it's a kid show. But I maybe 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 I'll come out the other end of the of uh, the earth or something and and uh show up somewhere else, but I don't think so. I think she's gone. <laughs> She's in the watery grave, but she was sure fun and looks cool too with that purple hair. I know you had another there was a lead a lead role with the uh, virus buster surge. 
virus buster search. Oh, so let's see. What is what if that one sounds familiar too? Like I said, a lot of them are very. I really because I hardly. I mean, what does that even mean? Virus buster search. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> how do you remember that? Like, uh, but that was one of the more serious ones, right? That mm-hmm. was like because I did some cop ones, like some serious stuff, like saving the planet. I was gonna ask. Um, what aspects of Ur do you like relate to the most? What's so fun to play do? What's so fun about her is to is that I I'm not like her, <laughs> right? <laughs> is that I get to you know be this conniving, manipulative, dangerous kind of conniver? You know, I mean she's mostly harmless. I mean I I, I love her. She's so fun, but. Uh, I'm not the manipulative sort, but, uh, or even like prank, I don't prank people or do any of that kind of stuff, you know, but that just makes her so fun to play. I'm such a badass, you know, like as far as a fighter goes, but I'm really, it's like, I, I'm really nothing like her at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of my uh, signature questions, I always like to ask voice actors if there is like a single most emotionally intense headspace you had to get into for a role or. Yeah, um, there have been. Not an anime, though. It was Richard the Stork. It was really one of my favorite. It was, it's a coming-of-age like adventure story. It's a, it's a little um, sparrow who was adopted by storks, so he thinks he's a stork. And when the storks go uh, fly to Africa for the winter, he can't go with them because a sparrow will never make it that journey. He gets left behind, and then I'm a pygmy owl, is overgrown and I can't fit in the nest. So I've been abandoned and I live in the cemetery. We find each other. We decide to go get him to Africa to join his family. So we take it. So it's like planes, trains, and automobiles and other animals help us along the way and really lovely. And um, there were some really tender, lovely moments in that, that really uh, fun and sweet, but kind of hard because it was like you had to go back to like being you know, a, a, a rejected kid, you know, or yeah. like a, um, the headspace, you know, all the issues we have growing up. So that was kind of a little, fortunately, no one will ever see it because I got replaced by Jane Lynch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I got paid. So that was cool. And like, as told by Ginger, um, when I, when I, the first thing that I did for that, they got me, um, my sad card was the theme song mm-hmm. and uh and then they replaced me with macy gray <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I get replaced. i'm in good company i've been replaced by some really great talent uh which isn't you know happens sometimes because they got to sell they got to sell copies so sometimes they uh got to stack the deck as it were in anime i'm trying to think there was there was a couple that i really remember there were some death scenes a mental toll was taken on some of the more other the 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 real bad the real bad anime (laughs) bad storylines and cheesy bullshit situations and having to do them over and over again you know and it was just damaging it was physically damaging and mentally damaging so i had to stop doing some of them which is which uh, i know you know what the whole industry actually did in new york but, um, but yeah, emotionally, I, I, I know there was a couple, I know, I know Mike definitely directed me in some, some really intense stuff. Cause I remember, I remember having some moments in his booth. He's a fantastic director. He really is. He's probably my favorite to work with. I would say. Okay. It's, uh, and also the, it was some of the best characters for me too you know like the quality of the work w- that was there where I got to actually do more acting yeah than the other stuff I'd worked on in the past where it was much lighter and topical and not that you know the characters weren't exactly fleshed out you know <laughs> mm-hmm. well I think so. one of the with well, the most like recent major anime that you were a part of was um in Queen was a Queen's Blade he, I think so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Those were warrior chicks too, right? That was super fun. Yeah. Yeah. I was sad to see that one end too. That was another one. I was like, oh, there's no more of these for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, it's been a minute now. Final question I was going to ask was what, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Oh, um, uh, wow. Well, I, you know, I just, if, if someone can, if I inspire somebody to do something, you know, with their own life, and that's fantastic. And that's all I ever really, I'm just trying to be the best self I can be. Um, but if any of my work inspires other people either to do what I did or, or not do what I did, you know, I have fun. I just have a lot of fun with my life and uh, I don't always get it right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I could probably be a lot more ambitious, um, but, uh, but I do have a good time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thanks for, yeah, we're going to do this. Thank you. Thanks for asking, Chris. It was really great to meet you. Yeah, and uh, you have a, have a, have a nice life out there in Minneapolis. I'll, I'll come, uh, so check out your your youtube thing i'd love to uh see what you're doing over there this is really neat that you're doing this uh, oh, that people want to see it so thanks everybody for watching thanks <laughs> <laughs> bye. right goodbye bye